Good evening. I'm Pastor Alex Christian, the senior pastor here at Memorial United Methodist Church. And along with the pastoral team of Pastor Stewart and Claude, I'd like to welcome you to our Good Friday uh, evening service. Uh, this evening, we're going to be uh, offering you uh, The Way of the Cross. It's United Methodist uh, Stations of the Cross, and we'll share a little more about that as we go on here. But I want to encourage you to, wherever you're at, to just uh, uh, join us. And this is meant to be a, a, a simple, prayerful, reflective, reflective experience for you. So it would be uh, helpful for you to be in a quiet space where you can just kind of be with yourself or whoever is joining you for this experience. And uh, just to get not only into your head, but also into your heart. So there will be some times where we will be praying together. Uh, we will be uh, just have some silent time together. And then we'll, there will be a brief reflection uh, as well. Uh, and this time, let me just share a, an opening uh, prayer with you. God is light, in whom there is no darkness at all. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world. And we love the darkness rather than the light. Almighty God, graciously behold this, your family. And even though we are not physically together, we are united across time and space through this wonderful gift of the Internet you have blessed us with. So we pray for our whole family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. So what we're going to do is, is go through different stations of the cross. If you've ever uh, experienced that before, you may be familiar with it. If you've never, this is your first time, what I'm going to do is, is share different passages of Scripture. After each passage, I'm going to share a little reflection. Uh, and at the end of that reflection, there'll be a, about a minute where we'll just be silent. You get to kind of just meditate on that scripture, that reflection, put yourself in there thinking about it. And then I'll offer a prayer that I'll pray all, for our, all of us on, on your behalf. And then we'll move into the next station, do the same thing, and all the way through all the stations. So again, I just want you uh, to free yourself to kind of just get in that space with God. Let God speak to you. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. And just allow yourself to experience this and uh, let this be an experience. I think it will be a, a powerful time for you with, with God and on this Good Friday. The first station, Jesus prays alone. And the passage is from Luke chapter 22, verses 39 to 44. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them, about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. Consider, if you will, how you would feel if you were faced with the absolute knowledge that all who you ever loved would deny you. Jesus prayed in the garden alone, knowing that his death was about to take place and knowing that his beloved disciples, his closest friends, would abandon him in his most dire need. Reflect upon how sometimes we place our will ahead of God's will. How sometimes we might even take God 
and Jesus' sacrifice for granted. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, forgive me for my forgetfulness in the times I take you for granted. Help me to be mindful that in my short-sightedness and in my sinfulness, I have offended you and grievously hurt you even though I don't intend to and even when I don't want to. Have mercy and forgive my sins, my shortcomings, and my weaknesses. In Jesus' name, amen. The second station. Jesus is arrested from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 47 through 56. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. And at once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. And Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. And then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place. For all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the Scriptures be fulfilled which say it must happen in this way? And at that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Think about how Jesus must have felt, having had compassion on so many and having healed so many of their sicknesses, their infirmities, only to be met with angry, cursing people who intended to repay his goodness with harm. A betrayal from a trusted friend became an additional torment. Reflect upon how sometimes we extend hate and violence to others instead of love striking Jesus, and in doing so, piercing God's heart.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, so many times I have abandoned your teachings in favor of expediency. I have left behind all that you taught so many times and have neglected my duty to love others as you have loved me. Forgive me and bless me with your forgiveness, with your grace, with your mercy, and with your strength. In Jesus' name, amen. The third station. The Sanhedrin tries Jesus from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, verses 61 through 64. Jesus remained silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the Mighty One, coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Think of how Jesus must have felt being tried by the very spiritual leaders with whom God the Father entrusted his holy word. We might at least have called them hypocrites. But Jesus never said a word in his own defense. Instead of an angry outcry, his loving heart forgave them for their deceit and lack of love. Reflect upon how sometimes we are self-entitled, preoccupied with our rights instead of the needs of others, offering condemnation instead of extending forgiveness. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, sometimes I find myself confronted by unjust accusations from people I consider to be my friends. The pain I feel is so terrible at this betrayal. Yet in your case, you forgive them before they did you harm and attempted to defame you. Teach me how to be humble and forgiving, but most of all, how to love them the way you do, and you love me so completely. In Jesus' name, amen. The fourth station, Pilate tries Jesus. From the Gospel of John, chapter 18, verses 33 through 37. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priest had handed you over to me. What have you done? And Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? And Jesus answered, You say 
that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Consider how Jesus must have felt being abandoned by his own people and turned over to heathen unbelievers for judgment. Jesus was not guilty of anything, yet he was being tried by one who knew nothing of the scriptures or of the heavenly Father. Think of what it must have felt like to be accused by liars and deceivers before someone so unjust and so unforgiving as the Roman governor from a foreign land. Reflect upon how sometimes we live for the kingdom of this world instead of God's kingdom, choosing our way instead of God's way of life. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, sometimes when I feel I have been let down by those I care about the most, I want to abandon them and go my own way. Teach me always to be just and compassionate. If ever I am in a position when I must make a decision concerning someone else. In Jesus' name, amen. The fifth station, pilot sentences Jesus. From the Gospel of Mark, chapter 15, verses 6 through 15. Now it was the custom at the festival to release a prisoner the people requested. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them what he usually did according to to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. And Pilate spoke to them again, Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! And Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Consider how Jesus, after being scourged and crowned with thorns, was unjustly condemned by Pilate to die on a cross. Reflect upon how sometimes we equally condemn Jesus by neglecting to stand up for him in this world and how we fail to advocate for those who are daily condemned by others and by the systems and structures in this world that are unjust.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, it was my sins that condemned you to the cross and ask you by the merits of this sorrowful journey to assist my soul in its journey towards eternity. Never permit me to separate myself from you again and help me to grow in my love of God the Father and appreciate your sacrifice for me. In Jesus' name, amen. The sixth station, Jesus wears a crown. From the Gospel of John, chapter 19, verse 5. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate said to them, Here is the man. Consider the pain of having sharp, hardened thorns shoved violently onto your head. Consider the blood flowing freely down your face and blurring your eyes, blurring your vision so you cannot even see your tormentors. Remember Jesus' last commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Reflect upon how sometimes through our passiveness and lack of involvement, we inflict suffering upon others. Choosing self-preservation over people we identify as our enemies. Deserving vengeance instead of exercising love towards others. All. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, open my eyes when I am troubled so I don't lose sight of the suffering of others. I have not thought about how it must have felt to be tortured as you were, beaten, scourged, and forced to wear a crown of thorns that ripped into your scalp. I could never bear the pain as you did without a cry of pain, let alone forgive my tormentors and continue to love them. Help me, Lord, to learn your perfect love so that I may be one with you in all I do. In Jesus' name, amen. The seventh station, Jesus carries his cross. From the Gospel of Mark, chapter 15, verses 18 through 20. And they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. And after mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. Consider how Jesus, in making the journey with the cross on his soldiers, shoulders, thought of us and offered himself to God in our place, aware of the death he was about to undergo. Reflect upon how sometimes we abuse our own power over others, even refusing to lay our lives down so others can be empowered to live equally as God's children in this world.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, help me to accept the trials I will have to endure for the rest of my life. I ask you by the merits of the pain that you endured to grant me strength to endure and carry my cross through life with patience and resignation. I repent of my sins and ask that you help me keep on the path ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. The eighth station, Simon carries the cross. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, verse 26. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country. And they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. Consider how the religious leaders and fickle crowd, after seeing Jesus weaken with each step and fearing that he would die before he was crucified, the Roman soldiers recruited Simon of Cyrene to help carry the cross behind our Lord. Reflect upon how sometimes we neglect the suffering of others and the cross they carry daily refusing even to help them carry their cross, refusing to free them from shouldering the burden on their own. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I accept the cross I have to bear. You died out of love for me. Grant me strength to live for you and bear my cross for you. And help me to bear my burden and help others with their burdens. In Jesus' name, amen. The ninth station. Jesus speaks to the woman. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, verses 27 through 31. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Consider how these women wept with compassion as seeing Jesus in such a state, streaming with blood, weakened and scorned by onlookers as he walked, hobbled, he even fell along. Consider Jesus' words, Do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Reflect upon how sometimes we turn a blind eye to others who are segregated in this world by gender roles, social labels, racial, cultural, religious differences in other ways, at defense of others and the heartbreak of God.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I weep for the sorrows I have caused in my life and for the offenses I have committed against God. You have loved me so much, and it is that love that causes me to have great sorrow for my sins and the offenses I have caused against others. Forgive me, Lord, and strengthen my resolve that I may honor your image and likeness in all your children. In Jesus' name, amen. The tenth station, Jesus is crucified. From the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, verses 33 through 34. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right, and one on his left. And then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. Consider how Jesus felt being thrown down upon the cross, ripping open the wounds of the scourger's whips. Consider how he extended his hands, allowing those terrible nails to be driven blow by blow into his outstretched hands. Consider his awful nails being driven into those feet, those feet that walk so far and tirelessly, bringing the good news of salvation to a hurting and hungering world. Jesus offered to God the sacrifice of his life for our salvation. His captors fastened him with nails to the cross, raised the cross, and left him to die in anguish and great suffering. Reflect upon how sometimes we contribute to the crucifixion of Jesus through our sins of commission and omission against God and others, driving nails which divide and hurt rather than unite and heal. At this time, I encourage you where you are to take a minute of silence, and you can either bow your heads or, or kneel. The eleventh station. Criminals speak to Jesus. From the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, verses 39 through 43. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly. For we are getting what we deserve for our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. And then he said, Jesus, remember me 
when you come into your kingdom? And he replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Consider the pain and anguish that Jesus must have felt being hung between two criminals and being ridiculed by the very people he loved so much and to whom he had so many times extended compassion and healing. Consider the courage he had to forget his pain and minister to the criminal who asked for forgiveness, promising the man that he would be in paradise with Jesus that day. Reflect upon how sometimes we forget to look past the mistakes, the sins, and the needs of others right besides us. Responding to people by the labels which the world gives them, the judgments that we and others make, choosing self-righteousness instead of identifying with them as equals and responding to them and their needs as we do ourselves. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, so many times I have been so selfish in my pain that I forget how others too feel pain. Sometimes I've forgotten to help out when I could have. And I've forgotten to have grace and mercy for others just like you have with me. And I have violated your final commandment that I love others the way that you love me. Please help me and help us to love with the love that you have. In Jesus' name, amen. The 12th station. Jesus speaks to Mary and John from the Gospel of John, chapter 19, verses 25b through 27. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and a disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. And then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. Consider the pain in a mother's heart as she beheld her son nailed to a cross amid a crowd of jeering spectators. Consider her pain in seeing those cruel runes from the scourger's whip, the crown of thorns embedded into the brow, the terrible nails holding the hands and feet that she had bathed as a baby. Consider the guilt of the beloved apostle who once ran away in fear, standing at the foot of the cross and looking up at his dying friend and Lord. Get a sense of the enormity of Jesus' love as he forgives John by granting him the privilege of caring for his mother. Consider forgiveness given in the midst of great pain and anguish. Reflect upon how sometimes we fail to hear the cry of the orphan, the widows, the stranger inside and outside the walls of the church failing to welcome all people into our lives, loving them equally as God's children, incorporating them equally into our family.
Let us pray. My Lord Jesus, but a sorrow you experienced in this great meeting, grant me the grace of a devoted love of your mother and your beloved apostles. Let their example of devotion become my own. Let their goodness and life become real in me. Forgive me when I turn away from you and grant me strength to return to you humbly. In Jesus' name, amen. The 13th station, Jesus dies on a cross. From the Gospel of John, chapter 19, verses 28 through 34. After this, when Jesus knew all, that all was now finished, he said, in order to fill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break the legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. Consider how Jesus, after three hours of agonizing pain on the cross, consumed at length with his anguish, abandoned himself to the weight of his body, bowed his head, in submission, and died. Reflect upon how sometimes we contributed to the brokenness in this world and in the lives of others, rather than being God's instrument of healing, bringing comfort, hope, and relief. Let us pray. My dying Lord Jesus, as I behold the cross you died on for me, I know what length you went to for me and others, to unite us with God each other and give us new life. May I never forget and embrace you with unending burning love, following you to the end of my days in this world. In Jesus' name. Amen. The 14th station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. From the Gospel of John, chapter 19, verses 38 through 42. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one, because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices and linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation and a tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Consider how the disciples of Jesus carried the body of Jesus to bury it. Consider the grieving mother who had arranged the body in a sepulchre 
with her own hands. As they closed the tomb and were true, they carried a burden of pain deep within their hearts. Reflect upon how sometimes we fail to mourn with others in their times of loss, uniting with them in their pain and suffering, sharing in the carrying of their burdens, so together we can experience eternal rest. Let us pray. Help me to weep with those who weep. Help me bring comfort to those who need comfort. Lord Jesus, you rose again on the third day. And I ask you by your resurrection to make me rise gloriously with you at my last day. Let me be always united with you to praise you, to love you, and to glorify you forever in this world. In Jesus' name, amen. This evening, we meet at the cross. Each and every one of us, as followers of Jesus, we meet at the cross. And if you've never had a relation with God or Jesus, you have an opportunity to meet at the cross as well. But here's the thing, as as we have seen these different folks and and people on the journey through the stages of the cross, we can also, I know I can, see myself in all these people. In the folks that have been lined up selling crucify him, the soldiers nailing him, the, the people, the disciples that ran away, we can all find ourselves in these people in, in some way because we all fall short, right? We all make mistakes, we all err, we all do these things that we've talked about. We all make mistakes. It, the Bible says we all sin and fall short of God's glory. We all meet at the cross. But we don't meet there, we're not there by ourselves. We find Jesus there. And just as on that cross is empty this, this evening, but we find on Good Friday the, uh, that afternoon, we believe somewhere between 12 and 3, that Jesus is hanging there and he meets us at that cross. And just like he did with every person there, those that were nailing him to the cross, those that were ridiculing him, and, and like the one thief had asked them to remember him, Jesus extends forgiveness to all of us. What is the first time? What is the thousandth time? He stretches out and his blood covers each and every person tonight. When we come to him and we say, Jesus, forgive me. Because I don't know what I do. But I know I want to follow you. I know I want to give myself to you. Help me. Cover me, Jesus, with your righteousness, with your holiness. Help me in this world to live for you each and every moment, each and every day. And a beautiful thing is Jesus does that through the power of his spirit in us. And even though we will make mistakes again, I will continue to make mistakes again. You will continue to make mistakes again because we are human and we have that tendency in us to be tempted and to do the wrong thing at times, we can still come back to this cross and Jesus and receive that forgiveness, confess our sins, confess our mistakes, our shortcomings, and meet Jesus at the cross and receive that forgiveness. And we continue to find ourselves not alone at the cross, not only because of Jesus, but we find each other. And tonight you're not alone at the cross. Just as tonight there's people from all over and Lake Placid and I believe probably other places joining us, I want you to know you're not alone. See, we need to support each other as we're on this road and life of leading the Sunday of resurrection as we're struggling to live this life and be who God calls us to be. It's so essential that we 
care for each other, that we support each other, that we cry with each other, that we celebrate with each other. And I think at this time where we're in the world, it's really showing us that, if, if not at any other time. So if you're alone out there, I want to really encourage you to reach out to us through the comment section, through our email, or reach out to me, reach out to any of the pastoral staff, reach out to each other. Because we cannot do this alone. We need God and we need each other. That's why God places us in the body of Christ at the cross. So we can be with each other, so we can support each other, so we can help follow Jesus together in this world. And I want to encourage you, if you're not part of a church community, to please be so. I know this is a crazy time to be because we can't be physically together. But I want to know you can still be part of a church or this church this way. We have service on Sunday, Sunday Easter morning. We're going to still celebrate resurrection and new life. We're going to find that the stone is rolled away. We're going to talk about that at 10 a.m. You can join us live. It will be recorded. At sunrise, we're going to have a live feed of our cross on the lakeside with flowers. You'll be able to have a time of prayer meditation there and various ways to join us throughout the week. You're not alone at the cross. Please join me in prayer. Lord, this evening, I come to you for any person. We come together, join together for any person and every person out there, Lord. And Lord, for anyone here that, that tonight or that is coming together throughout whenever they're watching this, that, that feels their bottom self, Lord, we pray for the, the Holy Spirit and anointing and empowerment of the Holy Spirit, Lord, that would come into their hearts, their lives, into that place surrounding them, Lord, and let them know they are not alone, Lord, that you are with them, that you have come for them, Lord, at this moment, at this time, at this second, at this day, for them, to give them a new life, to give them a relationship with you, to be with them every moment from here on forever. Let them know that you love them, no matter what's happened in the past, what's been done, that you forgive them, you continue to love them, that you accept them as they are. You're reaching out, you're putting your arms around them, you're, you're letting them know that they are your child. You're proud of them. They're part of your family. And they got brothers and sisters all over the place in this church and who watch now, who will support them. We we'll help them grow. We we'll help them figure this out. We'll be there when they need them. And Lord, let the love of Jesus flood them right now. Let your love envelope them and carry them. And you know, physically, we may not be together for right now and for a little bit. Let them know that they're not alone. And Jesus, I pray for others. There might be people out there right now that have taking a break from you for a while or maybe falling away for whatever reason. And that happens sometimes. I know it's happened to me before. Let them know to welcome back home the relationship with you. There's room at the table. The light's been kept on the porch. Just come through the door. Come back home to God and to the church and to the home. And there's people out there tonight, Lord, that have been hurt by the church, have been hurt through other people, and they've been burned. Let them know there's grace, there's peace, there's love. Just like you forgave, they can forgive, they can start again. And we're all human, we all make mistakes, but we let's try to figure this out together. That's what families do. But when all is said and done, we try to love each other and be there for each other and, and work through our differences. We still meet at the cross. We're forgiven and covered by the blood of Jesus. And I pray for those out there that in the midst of this virus that feel alone, that feel disconnected because they're not in the church or around other people, that you will just let them know you got them, that we got them, that the Holy Spirit will continue to empower them and fill them with new life. And I pray as we go into Easter Sunday that we are reminded that this is not the end. It's only a continuation of the world, of the new life that's coming through Jesus. That soon and very soon, 
we will be together again physically celebrating Jesus and the resurrection. And we will do it this Sunday because Jesus is still risen. And I pray peace be known in this world that for the revival that is happening now will just continue to be moving through the Spirit, through this church, and through every place. And Lord, we give all the praise and glory to you as our Father, as our Lord, as our risen God, our King. Move through your Spirit in us, in this place, and everywhere with your amazing love and grace in the body of Christ through each of us. In Jesus' name we pray.
I want to thank you for joining us this evening. And as we head into the weekend, I just want to you continue to be touched by the Holy Spirit, by the all that Jesus has done for us. Pray for the unity of the church. Pray for revival and all that's going on in the church and this world and people's lives. And as we come into this Sunday, remember that we will continue to be rejuvenated, renewed with new life, no matter what is going on in this world. That we will con- our Easter and resurrection people. Go in peace. May Jesus Christ, who for our sake became obedient unto death, even death on a cross, keep you and strengthen you this night forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen.